Hello everyone, I'm Em. Welcome back to Tech Block. Today we're going to be talking about power supplies, Ryzen, Vega 64, and my PC blue screening every single day. So it's going to be an exciting video. First things first, though, we have our 10 gigabit fiber optic cable that has now arrived. I bought this on Amazon. It was super cheap, and much cheaper than all the other ones. So hopefully it's good and actually can do 10 gigabit transfer speeds over the network. So hopefully this all works. Now my 10 gigabit network card will be arriving on the 15th. Uh, Netgear sent me one probably close to two weeks ago, and it's apparently been sitting in the post office waiting to be collected, but uh, the postman didn't leave uh, like a note in my post box saying that they failed to deliver it, so I had no idea that it's been sitting in the post office all this time. I went ahead and emailed Netgear, they gave me a tracking number, and yeah, it turns out it has just been sitting in the post office for like two weeks now, so it's gonna be re-delivered on the 15th, which is like in two days from now, and then finally we can get 10 gigabit all set up, and it's just gonna be a real good time. Now, the new PC build will be starting, I think, tonight. Uh, I'm absolutely fed up with my PC's performance and it blue screening every couple of hours. It is very, very frustrating at this point and I can't take it no more. So we're gonna be doing a brand new PC build, still sticking with the same RAM, the same motherboard and the same CPU, but uh, almost everything else is going to be changed, including the graphics card. We have also a brand new power supply here from Thermaltake. I'm now working with Thermaltake. They hooked me up and sent over their iRGB plus 850 watt power supply. Now, this is this is a beast, guys. 80 plus platinum, right? Our current power supply is like 80 plus gold, I believe. So this is a very nice efficiency boost right here. It's an 850 watt power supply. It's RGB, of course. This is tech block. And this RGB power supply, I think, can also sync up to Razer Chroma. One of the reasons I actually wanted to work with Thermaltake so much is because a lot of their products do work with Razer Chroma and you can sync up all the RGBs and stuff and just have a real good time. And uh, I believe they even have an Amazon Echo app. Uh, so you can change the like lighting effects of your Thermaltake devices via an Amazon Echo, which is sick. Uh, so I can't wait to actually check that out. Um, unfortunately, it's only a power supply, so uh, I don't even know if I'll be able to see the RGB lighting effects in the actual PC case we're building in, but I hope I am able to see the lighting effects, uh, somewhat at least. If not, we can always pop this power supply into like another case, like that Sharkoon one, which does actually have like a power supply cutout bit so you can actually see the RGB fan and stuff. So uh, I can't wait to actually test this guy out and put it in this PC build as it's a nice power supply, guys. 100% Japanese capacitors, fully modular, and the cables that it came with are actually like real good. Uh, they're not like ketchup and mustard cables or anything. They came in this lovely thermal take uh, bag right here. When you open it up, you will be greeted with this lovely uh, packaging here, as well as black flat sleeves cables. It's kind of what you expect, I guess, at this price point. It is a pretty high quality power supply and uh, it's RGB. So very, very nice. I, I, I approve of this stuff. Uh, we have a, a USB to like micro USB type cable uh, to plug into the power supply and then plug into your motherboard so that you can control the actual RGB lighting effects. So keep that in mind if you want to buy one of these and uh, it does come with like a power cable as well. Ooh, and some mounting screws and zip ties. Very nice. Very nice. So that power supply is going to be going into the new PC build and it's going to be real good. So that's kind of the power supply stuff out of the way. Now, my PC has been blue screening a lot lately. Uh, today, I've tried to play Civilization VI. I was playing as the Russian Empire, if anyone is wondering, and um, uh, the PC kind of crashed twice in the span of, I think, two hours, which just made me kind of rage quit, and I'm like, right, that's it. I'm done with Civ. I can't run this game without the PC blue screening and just crashing on me. Now, I think first the game crashed twice on like the exact same turn, which was very annoying, and then I went back into Civ like the third time after the game had crashed and uh, then the PC blue screened, which was even more annoying. But then after the PC recovered from the blue screen of death and uh, you know, I hopped back into Civ and probably an hour later it blue screened again. So I'm like, that's it. I I've had enough of Civ. I can't, I can't play this game without the PC crashing over and over again. And it's not just Civilization 6 that causes the PC to blue screen or just apps to crash all of a sudden. It's Literally anything at any point could cause it to blue screen. Uh, like if you follow me on Instagram, you see I post almost every one of my blue screens like on my story. And uh, it's kind of becoming like a daily occurrence now, uh, which is just, just annoying. As I think a few times it's happened during uh, video editing as well, which is not good because you lose some progress, uh, you know, while editing. 
Uh, so it's just getting out of control at this point. I don't really know what's causing it. Perhaps it's a faulty overclock on my CPU, on my RAM, on the SOC voltage. I don't know what the heck I've done wrong. I know it's not a graphics card overclock as the graphics card is running absolutely stock at the moment. And there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, I, I doubt it's drivers. I just don't know, right? Something's causing it to crash. And uh, my solution to this problem is going to be to reinstall Windows as well as just kind of change the graphics card and a few other components uh, just so we can make like a brand new PC build video out of it as the GameX case, the Starlight. Uh, we need to build in that like as soon as possible now and uh, Thermal Take is sent over their power supply. NVIDIA sent over the RTX 2060. Ooh, and I can finally put this HyperX RGB SSD to good use. Let's actually unlock it because it's just been sitting in this freaking cage all this time now. This poor... SSD has just been kind of like left alone by itself, but it will be put to good use and this is going to become like my primary games drive. Uh, so all my Steam games are going to be going on this RGB HyperX Fury SSD. It's one terabyte in size, so I can pretty much fit like any amount of Steam games I want onto here as I don't really have that many games, but all of them will definitely fit on this beautiful drive here. And uh, I don't know if there's a dedicated spot on the Game Max Starlight case to actually like mount this and actually be seen so I might have to do some DIY stuff I'll probably like get some double-sided tape and stick the SSD to somewhere in the case basically just so we can see its beautiful lighting effects and uh, yeah it's just gonna be real good now uh, one other topic I wanted to cover is uh, was the upgrade worth it that's kind of the title of this video I think uh, so uh, a while ago I upgraded my PC from the Intel Core i7 4770 CPU, 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM running at 1600 megahertz, or is it 1866? One of those, and um, a GTX 970 graphics card. So I think back in November, we upgraded the CPU as well as the RAM and the motherboard as well, I guess. And I think in December, I bought the uh, RX Vega 64 from Asus. And since then, the PC has seen like a noticeable improvement in performance. We also threw in a few more M.2 NVMe drives in there. Actually, two more. Uh, we had no NVMe storage in the past as it wasn't supported on the Z97X platform. Uh, M.2 drives were limited to 10 gigabit per second as opposed to 32 gigabit per second. So both my NVMe drives in my PC are running at, you know, their full speed. But uh, I do have plans to upgrade both of the drives there. Uh, I have one drive from ADATA, the ADATA uh, XPG 250 gig uh, NVMe SSD, as well as a WD Black like NVMe drive in there as well. Now, uh, I plan on swapping them both out for ADATA SX8200 Pro uh, NVMe M.2 SSDs. The read and write performance on those ADATA drives is insane and they are really, really well priced, which is just mind blowing to me. You can get the one terabyte model, at least here in the UK, for I think 168 pound. Uh, and the read and write performance is absolutely crazy on that drive. The read speeds are I think 3,500 megabytes per second and the write speeds are 3,000 megabytes per second, which is insane. And um, you can pick it up for a relatively cheap price. Uh, the just the performance on that drive is beautiful and it's very inexpensive for what it is really especially when compared to like Samsung's offerings like the uh, Samsung 970 Pro that's like 280 pounds and uh, I'm pretty sure this a data drive is faster than that Samsung drive which costs more than a hundred pound more so I'm definitely going to be picking up two of those one terabyte NVMe drives from a data as uh, I do kind of want to improve the NVMe performance ever so slightly as my NVMe drives now run at around probably 1.5 gigabytes per second so getting that number closer to like you know 3.5 gigabytes per second would be pretty good so definitely going to be upgrading those drives probably in the next month or two that's kind of the plan as a uh, even though they're like 168 pound, I want to buy two of them and that'll be like, what, 320, 330 pound overall. So I'm going to hold off on those for, I think, maybe a month or two. Uh, maybe A Data will sponsor it. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But uh, hey, uh, that's kind of it, I guess. Uh, the PC performance has been pretty good since we upgraded from the Intel CPU to this Ryzen 1. Anyway, back to the topic of, you know, was the upgrade worth it? Uh, yeah, it definitely was. The Ryzen CPU is not even that expensive anymore. The 2700X is, is just real good value. And if you're like a content creator, it's pretty good for like Adobe Premiere and stuff and like workstation type tasks, I suppose, as well as of course gaming. Uh, if you can push the overclock far enough and get very good RAM, then your game performance will be pretty good as well. Uh, unfortunately for me though, um, I think I might have messed up the overclock or Windows 10 just sucks. And uh, maybe like one of the new Windows 10 updates has 
pretty much caused my PC to blue screen every few hours. You guys know how Windows 10 is. So uh, yeah, maybe it's just like a Windows update that's just been corrupted or something. But I will be reinstalling Windows when we do this new PC build and hopefully the PC doesn't blue screen anymore as I've just have had enough. Honestly, like I just want to play Civilization 6 without the PC blue screening every few hours. It's it's pretty annoying and the game just crashes a lot as well. Uh, maybe I'm using like some bad mods on Civ 6. Maybe that's what's causing it here. You never know, dude. You never know. Also, so many of you are still asking me like, M, when is this car reveal video coming? Like you said it was coming a while ago and I'm like, yeah, uh, it, it was meant to go live a while ago. Uh, however, I've got some stuff planned for the car and I'll probably do like a before and after video of uh, all the tech that's being installed and set up in the car as uh, I have a lot of plans for it. Uh, a lot of things I want to change and add and just, uh, just, just make it better, uh, tech it out a lot and uh, hopefully make the car just, just a lot more fun to drive and more safe and stuff. Uh, so I've got a lot of plans for the car basically and I'm uh, gonna probably keep it for maybe one to two to maybe three years. I don't know, we'll see what happens, we'll see what I can do. I really would like to mess around with like performance mods and stuff and just kind of make the car faster and just, just a whole lot more fun to drive. But uh, unfortunately I'm gonna have to wait until next year I think uh, as a uh, UK insurance at the moment, UK car insurance that is, is very, very expensive for me. So my plan is to wait until next year, but hopefully my car insurance is a whole lot cheaper and I can switch to a different car insurance company that can actually, uh, you know, approve all of the car mods I want to do. As I do have a lot of plans for the car, a lot of things I want to do and change, but I can't do them for another year uh, until I can switch car insurance companies and uh, hopefully get a whole lot cheaper quotes in general. Uh, as the amount I'm paying for insurance now is ridiculous and uh, hopefully next year will be a bit cheaper uh, but apart from that everyone that's kind of been an update on the whole Ryzen CPU thing the whole PC build uh, the car all that stuff and a uh, massive shout out to Thermaltake for sending out their power supply to me it's gonna be real nice uh, apart from that everyone thank you all so much for watching and hope to see you in another video soon goodbye